I'm Pastor Edwin and welcome to this new life. Today we're going to discuss about faith and how to believe. I want you to enjoy this uh, preaching because I believe that God has something for you today. God bless you and enjoy. So as I am meditating of what I'm going to share today, the Lord has just given me this message. And the Lord has just given me this impression. I want you to teach my people to believe. Well, you are a believer, Lord. But no, it's more than just a name. And that's something that we need to understand today because I know some of you here, you're facing some situations and challenges and uh, some, some impossibilities of life. You're, maybe you're dealing with sickness. Maybe you're dealing with, with uh, poverty or lack of money or relationship or restoration of the family. And it seems like it's hopeless. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, nothing is hopeless for God. Can you say amen to that? For God, nothing is impossible. But there's an element that we need to, to understand. There's a, there's a dynamic in our life, in our experience with the power and the supernatural and the realm of the miraculous that we need to exercise. Not only to exercise, but to stay with that kind of realm. A place where you are in contact with the supernatural of God. You're a natural being, but God has given you the ability to access the supernatural. Can you say amen to that? Oh, I'll start with Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Where Jesus, well, Paul is revealing and teaching the people, the church of Rome, about the gospel, which is the power of God to bring to people. And it says in verse 17, for in it, it says, the righteousness of God is revealed. Say revealed. That means God has initiated. It is a mystery. It is something that we cannot understand. But God initiated revelation to humanity of righteousness. And He did this By bringing and sending Jesus to the world. That you are a sinful person, but God gave something to you so that you can be accepted in His presence. And that is right standing. And so He revealed, He made an initiation to reveal His righteousness. But it says there, it is revealed from what? From faith. You can only understand the revelation of God and His righteousness from the place where you will start believing. You will start from faith. Can you say amen to that? So when you receive the Lord Jesus, you started in faith. Right. But it says there, from faith to faith. That means, in other translation, it says, it, it started with faith, and you will end in faith. Your journey will always be by faith, my friend. Your journey will always walk in this life. We're full of challenges, and full of disappointments, and frustrations, and pain, and hopelessness. But I want to tell you right now, That when you started to walk with God, you started to walk in the journey of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 is not a definition of faith. It's a description. Okay, the word, it says in verse 1, now faith is a substance. The word faith is from a Greek word pistis, it is a noun. And it literally means a conviction of the truth of anything. And in the Bible, it is a conviction or belief of man's relationship to God and the divine things of God. And generally means pistis, as a noun of faith, 
means you trust God. What does it mean by trust? Well, right now, you trust your chair. That's why you're sitting to your chair. And you don't even th- think that your chair will fall down, right? Believe is the verb form of pistis, which is pisteo. So if you believe, your faith became an action form. Your faith started to work. Faith without work is what? You have faith, but it doesn't work. You're not believing. That means your faith is is worthless. It's it's a waste. So you just have a noun, which is a declaration. But if you just believe, then you acted upon your faith. Pisteo. To have faith. To commit yourself. To put your trust in. So, here, faith is the substance. What is very interesting about the substance, and I have mentioned a while ago that this verse is not a definition but a description. So, the verse is describing about what is faith. Faith is a substance. Interestingly, the word substance there is from the literal meaning, uh, the, the literal meaning of a under or standing under. Well, what, what, is the, what, what does it mean? A standing order. Well, it was used in a technical sense as a title deed. So it's a title deed. The word there, substance, literally means title deed. So what is the use of title deed? Nalimutan ko si magdala ng titulo, no? But what is a title deed? It's a proof of what? Ownership. That means, if I'm carrying a piece of paper that my name on it and declares that I, 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 I possess, I own that piece of property, that title deed is a proof that I own something. Now, faith is a title deed. A title deed of the things so far. That means it's a title deed of the things that you're, you're believing from the promises of God. You're hoping it to be the best. You're hoping that, that something will happen. You're, you're hoping that, that God will answer your prayer. Well, I'll just tell you, your faith is the title deed of what you are hoping. And if you have a title deed, that means you don't have to doubt about it. Can you say amen to that? If you have a title deed, nobody can question it. Even the enemy cannot question the promises of God in your life if you have a title deed. And what is that title deed? Your faith. And then it goes on to say that faith is a substance of things so forth. The evidence, very interesting, the word evidence there is a receipt. Literally, it's a receipt. That means if you buy something, what is the proof that you own that that, that piece of thing that you bought? Receipt. Like if I I bought a ref, ref, I will tell to my children, we have a ref. Where where is the ref? Well, this is the receipt. And the children will will not question you or your loved ones will, well, where's the ref? This is the receipt. It settles down everything. That's why in Amplified, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Let's go to the Amplified there. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the what? Title deed of the things we hope for. Being the proof, the proof of purchase. (laughs) Of the things we do not see. And the conviction. Say conviction. It's the conviction of their reality. What does it mean by conviction of their reality? Well, faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed in your senses. If you have faith, that means that's a real fact already 
in your heart. You don't see it in the natural, but it is already a reality. That's faith. Uh, how many of you here believe that you're going to heaven? Are you sure? Talaga? Have you seen heaven? Oh, hindi pa pala eh. What is your proof? Your faith, your title deed in the promises of God. And nobody can question your title deed. You own it already. Can you say amen to that? Come on! Woo! Hallelujah! Now the same principle also that you apply, not only for your eternal life and heaven, but in every daily situation of your life. That's the dynamic of your life that you started from faith and you will journey to faith. Everything that you need from a pair of socks probably to a property that you're believing to be sold or from a sickness of headache or fever to cancer, whatever sickness it is, God has given you the ability to access the supernatural, and that is faith. He's just looking for your faith. He's just looking for your faith, for your believing. Huh. Here's another very interesting description also of faith. Let's go to Eli uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is what? It is impossible to please Him. Very interesting because the word without, the word without, but without faith, is from the Greek word choris. What is very significant with this word is that it means to be outside of something, such as someone who lives outside the perimeters of the city. The word without. Chorus. It is a comparison between being outside and being inside. For example, in the house or out of the house. In the yard or out of the yard. In the car or out of the car. So, therefore, the word chorus depicts someone who is out of, not in a specific location. Faith is a location. Faith is your residence address as a believer. And the way it was used here in the original language is that without faith, that means if you are out of your residence, out of your address, okay, then it is impossible. To please God. You can accurately render it as this. When you live outside faith. Living beyond its boundaries and its perimeters. You make it impossible to please Him. So what does it mean? Faith is your address my friend. And your address of faith. Is the place where the delivery of your goods will go. If God will bring delivery to you, He will always seek the address of faith. And if you are not inside that faith, and the delivery is coming in, what will happen? Well, He's outside of His residence, return to the sender. Is not there. So stay in your faith. Can you say amen to that? 
stay there. Whatever happens, however long, stay there. Stay there. Don't be discouraged. Be patient. Stay there. Don't get out of the perimeter. Don't get out of the border of faith. Stay there. Seems like I'm talking to somebody right now. Some of you are about to. Yoko na. Stay there. One thing also that is very interesting about faith is that it is a perimeter, it's a boundary. And so that's why in Hebrews chapter 4, it says there, For since a promise remains, remains entering, that means you can enter into a perimeter of faith. And that perimeter of faith is rest. <laughs> and what is a perimeter? What is a, a perimeter of rest? What is a location of rest? Well, it is a place where you can, you can relax and be at peace. It is a place where you don't worry because God is in control and God will answer my prayer and God will provide my needs and God will heal me. So it's a place of rest. You enter into the perimeter of rest. And some of you are still carrying burdens. That's why Jesus, God said, cast all your cares upon him and rest in the place of your faith, in your believing. Do you believe that God will answer your prayer? Yeah. Then rest. Don't think about it. Rest. Sometimes the enemy would like to, to uh, torment you. That's where the time where you speak, where Pastor Paul is just saying, don't just think about resisting that kind of attack in your mind. You speak. You declare. Because the moment you declare, you're not only shouting to your enemy, you're also shouting to your mind. Scientifically speaking, if you speak, your mind will listen. Scientifically speaking. If you're just thinking... Wake up! Speak! No, in the name of Jesus. I will, not, I will not succumb to that kind of pressure. I believe God is in, in control and He's doing something in my life. Can you say amen to that? Don't just think about it. Oh, oh. Scientif Scientifically speaking, your, your, your brain is wired to listen to your voice. So you speak. The word of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For He who comes to God, He who comes to God, must believe that what? He is. Stop there. Must believe that He is. If you come to God, you don't believe on who you are, you don't believe on what the situation is. You believe of who He is. The basis and the foundation of your faith is on the place of knowing who He is. Now, if I will teach from cover to cover who He is, we will stay here for one year. But I have a video, which is good, that shows who he is from Genesis to Revelation. And I want to show it to you. It's a 10-minute video. And as you are watching this, as you are in your residence of faith, and whatever need that you have, I want you to apply this verse. For he who comes to God must believe that what he is. Let's watch this. God's nature never changes. He is and he will always be. He is who he is. That's what his name Jehovah even means. means I am. He 
Yahweh means He is. He's God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. He is. He is. Elohim, God, Judge, Creator, Yahweh, Lord, Jehovah, El Elyon, the Most High God, Adonai, Lord, Master, El Shaddai, Lord, God Almighty, El Elam, the Everlasting God, the God of Eternity, the God of the Universe, the God of Ancient Days. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. He is the Shiloh, the Peacemaker, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner, the Lord my miracle. He is Kana, jealous. He is Jehovah Emkadash, the Lord who sanctifies you, the Lord who makes holy. He is. He is a star. A scepter out of Israel. The cursed of God. The captain of the host of the Lord. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of powers. The rock of my salvation. My salvation. He is the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds. He is the day's man. The interpreter. My rock and my redeemer. He is crowned, the crown of pure gold. The most blessed forever. Forever. He is the forsaken. The worm and no man. He is Jehovah Ra. He is my restorer. The king of glory. He who sitteth king forever. He is a stranger and an alien. My strong rock, my rock and my fortress. Fairer than the children of men. The rock that is higher than I. The rock of my strength. The rock of habitation. He is as rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. The rock of my heart. The, the shield. shield. The rock of my refuge. The king and priest after the order of Melchizedek. A brother born for adversity. The friend that loveth at all times. A stone, stone of grace. grace. A friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He is his ointment poured forth. My well-beloved. A bundle of myrrh. A cluster of henna blooms. The rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. The lily of the valley. The chiefest among ten thousand. His countenance is as Lebanon. Yea, he is altogether lovely. He is my beloved and my friend. He is holy, holy, holy. He's a sanctuary. The great light. A son given. The mighty God. The father of eternity. He is a child born. The prince of peace. An ensign of the people. The nail fastened in a sure place. A strength to the poor. Strength. A strength to the needy in distress. A shadow from the heat. A refuge from the storm. He is the rock of ages. A crown of glory and beauty. He is a stone. A triad stone. A covert from the tempest. From the tempest. He is as rivers of water in a dry place. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. As a hiding place from the wind. He is the king in his beauty. My leader, the everlasting. The everlasting God. He is mine elect in whom my soul delighted. He is the light of the Gentiles. The covenant of the people. The polished shadow. Glorious. He is the Holy One of Israel. He is a man of sorrows. Despised. He's rejected. He is stricken. Submitted. He is wounded. He is oppressed. He is my portion, my maker, my husband. He's the God of the whole earth. The witness to his people. The leader. The commander. The redeemer. He is mighty. He is my physician. Jehovah Sid Canoe, the Lord our righteousness. David, their king. Their king. My resting place. My feeder. The plant of renown. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. He is the prince of princes. The Messiah. The prince. The strength of the children of Israel. The hope of thy people. The ruler. He is king over all the earth. He is a refiner's fire. Holders, so my refiner, my purifier. Purifier. Son of righteousness. He is Jesus, Yeshua, salvation. Emmanuel, God with us. He is born as the king of the Jews. He is a governor. The Nazarene. As the bridegroom. He is meek, lowly. He is the one of whom the Father says, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. The Son of the living God. Jesus the Christ. The Rock. The Builder. The Prophet of Nazareth. He is. The Holy One of God, my brother, the carpenter, and his life is a ransom. He 
He is. But he who comes to God must believe that He is. In every situation, in every need, He is rich to you. And then it says, and He is not just He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He is a rewarder. He is your reward. Whatever need that you have, if you believe, you seek Him, He's going to respond to whatever need that you have. Amen? All stand up. Glory to God. Oh God, thank you of who you are. Thank you that you are the reward of your people. All the names that we have seen and we have heard, the nature of who you are. We believe, I believe God. I believe who you are. If you haven't experienced Him as who He is and never received Him in your heart, I believe this is the day where God is telling you, can you believe? I'll do something in your life. I'll change your life. And if you want to receive Him in your life, this is the best time to receive Him and to just express of who God is to your life. So we bow down our head, close our eyes, say this with me, Father God, I thank You for Your love and for Your mercy, for Your grace for my life. Today, I open my heart. I invite you to come in. Be the Lord of my life. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you have risen from the dead. I believe that you are coming again. I believe you're the Lord of my life. I believe you are the salvation of my life. I believe you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. Today I declare, my life is for you. I entrust, I give, I cast my life into your hand. And thank you for a new day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Say church, amen. To listen to the whole message and to learn more about New Life and its ministries, visit newlife.ph. If you have a testimony you'd like to share or a prayer request, email newlife at newlife.ph.